I was discussing uh, the role of a tumor vaccine uh, to induce uh, tumor-specific immunity that we hope would be clinically effective. And so we've been studying a vaccine that is personalized, and we take the patient's own tumor cell, in this case myeloma, and fuse it with autologous uh, dendritic cells. So we create a cell that has both all of the aspects of the tumor, including the different subpopulations of the tumor, and puts them in the context of this powerful stimulating tool, the dendritic cell. And we've been able to show preclinically and now in clinical trials that this vaccine can expand uh, T cells that recognize the tumor that are polyclonal and uh, clinically potent. So we've looked at um, this vaccine in several settings, uh, in acute leukemia and in multiple myeloma, and have plans to look at this now in lymphoma and solid tumors as well. In acute leukemia, um, we looked at this approach in patients who achieve remission, but we know have a very high uh, relapse rate. So particularly in older patients with AML who are not transplant candidates, uh, we see a pattern of response where about half will go into remission with chemotherapy, but about 90% subsequently relapse, if not more. So in a phase one, two study, we looked at patients who went into remission and then we vaccinated them after they finished consolidation. And despite an average age of 63 and an expected high relapse rate, um, with about five years of follow-up now, over 70% of that patient population has remained in remission. So we were really excited about that. And it correlated with the expansion of T cells recognizing their leukemia, both in the blood and in the marrow. And it also was able to show us that we could generate a polyclonal response against shared antigens. And we're gonna be now exploring whether neoantigens from mutations that are specific to that patient's leukemia are similarly recognized. So that was very exciting. And based on that, we are now doing a large randomized trial of patients who are not transplant candidates and who are older to get standard of care, really you know, supportive care after finishing chemotherapy versus the uh, vaccine. Uh, we similarly have another trial that's getting started now of patients who are going to allogeneic transplantation but with high risk disease to get vaccinated after transplant. Uh, and one cohort in conjunction with a hypomethylene agent. So that's one set of data that we have and talked about. The other group is patients with myeloma, where we showed that after autologous transplant, where many patients again achieve response, but then go on, unfortunately, to develop progressive disease, that by vaccinating patients after transplant, we were able to nearly double the number of patients in complete remission, and that was without any other therapy. Um, based on that, we are now pursuing a randomized trial uh, that involves 17 centers across the U.S. Uh, and what was really novel about this was not just the design, which has a clinical endpoint uh, where we're asking whether patients who go through transplant and are vaccinated with maintenance therapy um, do better than those who get maintenance alone.